um, the crate back in DDo, and you'll notice that we have our normals from uh, from Endo uh, already put in. And the other thing you'll notice is that we have some nice edge detail here. We can see some of the aluminum peeking through. And that is because when you import your uh, normal into back into uh, DDo from Endo, uh, the, the way you have your material set up will take the normals into account. So how do we get it from one to the other? Uh, I actually didn't cover that in the last video. I apologize. Um, so we're going to take a quick look at uh, how to get to this point. So I'm going to file, or I'm going to save my project. Okay, I'm going to close up 3do. Uh, wait for it to close. All right. Yeah, see, if we go into this, this is our albedo. It made edge scratches for my my normals. That's pretty handy. So I'm going to close and then do here. Yes. All right, so if I go back into endo, uh, actually, I don't even have to go into endo. In particular, if I just go into this and open up uh, my normal map file, which, by the way, I saved from, if I open up Endo, um, I can save it. There's File, Save. But remember, this is just a Photoshop document, so I can also go to File, Save As, um, because that's what we're working in. We're working in basically a Photoshop document with some cool tools added to it. But um, so you'll notice I have my, my normal group here. Um, and this contains a lot of my my uh, information uh, from before. This is my normal group that I that I uh, created to do multi uh, with the uh, sorry with the multi normal tool. Um, that's the normal group I created. What I did is I went to this normal group and I zipped it, and that is that will allow all of this stuff to again save um, save space, but also be viewable in Endo. So make sure you do that, and then you save your file. Um, so, uh, and then also remember to keep an keep an eye on where exactly you are saving things. So if I go to save as, uh, I see it has this folder here uh, that was automatically generated in my exports. Um, and I actually thought that it was going to end up here. Um, see, there's another cube normal. So you have to be really careful of where you save these files. So make sure that they're saved in some place that, that uh, you'll remember. Uh, in fact, why don't we save this here in my crate texture Let's replace, yada, yada, yada. All right, so that's that's saved. Uh, we don't need this guy anymore. And all right, so let's open up Endo again and load project, uh, find our project. All right, and then because we saved again as that new, um, that new map. Let's let's. Oh, real quick. Sorry, I'm going kind of fast. So I opened up Endo or Dedo again. So I'm gonna um, remember I saved that normal map, but it would be working with whatever normal map you you created before uh, or the, it generated before uh, with the wood and and the metal and everything. So you'll want to actually re-import the new one you created through Endo. So and I recommend making it a separate file just so that you can uh, you know you don't want to accidentally overwrite something and you know if something does happen uh, you want to still have that that texture from before 
so I would write a whole new file so in that case that I do write a whole new file here's how I go about uh, re-importing it so in the ddo interface there's these buttons at the top they do a bunch of different things for example if you created a material you particularly like like let's say I like how steel, dirty, and aluminum are interacting here, and I like the way that the seams work. Uh, I could bunch them up together. I can uh, shift click them, and then I can actually save them uh, as a. Um, well, hold on. I could group selected, for example, put them in a group, so uh, put them in a little file folder, and then I can save. A smart material and then that saves it as one material so if I called it you know crate metal um, I could save it as one material so there's a lot of handy tools up here but I'm gonna use open uh, the one second to the left open the re importer to configure input maps and I'm going to load my new version of the normal okay and there it is we saved it before we're going to click re-render and this is where you go get a sandwich and if you've had a sandwich from before when you did this maybe you maybe you uh, go get dessert but it's doing one of its uh, the things that's very typical in 3d art where the computer crunches a bunch of numbers you don't need to worry about and uh, takes a while um, which actually in this type of 3d art that was fast uh, if you're rendering rendering um, like an animation it'll take forever so let's go to 3do yeah rendering animations those are the set it to render then go to bed kinda kind of renders um, luckily that was what we just had was not that kind of render so we have this um, which is pretty pretty handy um, so there we go there's our there is our newly imported model in all its glory. So the last thing we want to do here is we are going to um, use Photoshop to add some surface detail to the wood in particular because this is kind of boring. It's kind of lame to just have the um, just have it be blank wood. We want to have some like caution signs and all kinds of crazy video gamey things on it. So I am going to can I have a light spin. Ooh. Solid backdrop. No. Ah. That's pretty cool. Oh, that's kind of fun. Uh sorry, I'm messing around. Um, I'm gonna leave it like this. I think this is more fun to look at than than uh, gray. Gray's kind of boring. Um, I think the lighting is better too. So we're going to add uh, some some fun stuff into our our Photoshop document. So um, hmm. still dirty. Let's make it a little lighter. It's really really black right now. And, oh, that was the gloss. Whoops. Remember, keep tabs on where you are working. Still dirty. That's black, black. Let's make it not quite so dark. There we go. That's way better. Okay. Um, so we want to work in our albedo map. So let's x out of that, x out of 3 do, and hey look there we are in our albedo map which again remember is our color map. So uh, this is in a situation where you can choose to load in your uh, UV, you may not choose to, it's up to you. Um, I don't think it's terribly imperative right now so why don't we just uh, We'll not worry about it right now but um, what we're gonna do is we're going to so again like the the end do uh, like the the normal map this was actually a um, it's just a, 
a regular Photoshop document. So you can do more or less whatever you want with it, um, and and it'll be reflected in 3D. So we can edit it uh, and and have the freedom and tools of Photoshop at our disposal. So we are going to let's see, select pixels. No pixels are selected because there's nothing to select. No big deal. All right, so I'm going to add a new layer to this. And I want to find open. Oops, oops, oh, come back. Oh, geez. <sighs> Gosh, Photoshop, what are you doing to me? Um, well, welcome to how the sausage is made. All my tabs up here and. Uh, my recording software. Uh, we're going to reopen Photoshop. This happens sometimes with 3D art. It's not a big deal. Um, it's pretty normal, actually. So this is why you always want to save versions of things and and make sure um, you know you save often. With with Endo, it can be a little little tough because it's got sort of a indirect save structure like you know you can't just save a new file and it saves a, a straight up new file I mean you can you can save project as um, but it can get kind of dicey uh, but with 3d you want to save as often so let's reopen our project the other thing too is that crashes in a lot of these things aren't that destructive if you're using um, Maya or blender I actually find those crashes to be very destructive or not Maya or Blender, I'm sorry, Maya or Max. Uh, those crashes can be very destructive to the files you're working in, but um, cube normal, okay, so if we... And you'll notice that we don't have the, these grouped from before, um, so... Um, but all our normals are okay. So we're good. All right, good. Um, you'll notice these aren't grouped anymore. That's okay because I just did that as a demonstration. But let's save project anyway. Great, don't care. Uh, and then open up 3D to check on this. This is actually good. Um, working through a crash in a tutorial video is not something that you normally see. Um, all right, so there we go. We're back to where we were. Um, all right, so as I was saying before, before the crash, uh, we are going to play around with this as a Photoshop document. So I'm going to add a new layer, and in doing so, we are going to um, add some art to this. So if I go to File, Open, and then, haha, you worked this time. Um, let's see, AU Course Materials, Intro, All Tutorial Files, great. So let me see if I I don't know if I saved this image. Um, hmm. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go to my massive number of, of uh, tabs here, and I'm going to look up caution sign. Or a board game geek. Um, all right, so let's find a good caution sign, and it could be something generic. Uh, let's see. There's one I had in mind that I liked from before, and I'm going to try to. What was that one? Mm, tempting. Yeah, let's go with that one. So I do this, no, that's a, a 
meant to be on a pole caution sign. That's a bummer. Um, there. Ha. Found you. Um, can I get a better picture of it? All right, I guess that's the best we're gonna get. Um, what? Ew, no, get me out of here. Uh, we're just gonna copy image. So um, I do this with the huge massive disclaimer that I'm doing this purely for, for a tutorial right now. And when you do this, you should absolutely check uh, make sure you are not taking copyrighted material, copywritten material, and things like that. However, I'm going to just chalk this one up to fair use. But yeah, when you when you do this, uh, generally, actually, let me get rid of the um, get rid of the rotate. Um, yeah, just make sure you're using your own content or content you have the rights to. I just nabbed this offline. For the sake of the tutorial um, and because it's funny but um, FYI so I take my my uh, I copied my image I pasted it on I'm gonna get rid of this white stuff okay now I'm going to rotate and that's pretty cool. Um, all right, so I'm going to save that. Uh, now that's like a little, it, it doesn't look like it's really put on there. It doesn't look organic. So I'm going to, uh, it looks like I took a bad JPEG from the internet and pasted it onto my really cool texture, which I did. So I'm going to do a few things to blend it better. First is I'm going to, uh, if I right click on the layer and go to blending options now I can do a bunch of different stuff to this but I'm gonna do a slight drop shadow so I click the checkbox I click drop shadow it brings up these options and I'm gonna create let's do some distance and spread and size and I know it seems silly like that's gonna make it seem more photoshoppy but what I like about doing this is it actually makes it look like there's an edge to this thing, like it is on the image. Um, and then I'm also going to take my eraser tool and I'm going to get a fairly rough looking, um, fairly rough looking brush. Cool. Um, and you may not have brushes that look like this. That's okay. I keep in mind that I'm a professional uh, 3D artist, so I I'm gonna have lots of tools handy that you may not. That's that's okay. Um, but I'm gonna lower this opacity, and I'm going to scuff this up a little bit with this eraser brush. Uh, And I'm going to eat away at some of the edges. And the reason I want to do that is, again, we're making it look like it's actually supposed to be here. Um, and then I'm going to go to paint and get the same brush and make this white. So paint tool. Uh, I go up to this interface up here to select brushes, same thing for eraser. I was playing around with the opacity and flow, so how much it's actually going to to give me uh, paint-wise or eraser-wise. Uh, and then that, that let me erase without really making it um, like go completely away. I was able to erase it in, in stages. And then here, I'm going, I changed the color down here. 
uh, to white. You can also, there's this default uh, black and white thing right here above the colors, and then to switch back and forth between colors, it's X, so I put white on top, and now I'm going to um, gonna right click on this uh, in the layer um, on the checker part, which is you know the image, the picture of the layer. I'm gonna right click, select pixels, because I don't want to paint white outside of this image. So I select the pixels, and I'm going to decrease the flow and opacity pretty considerably. But I'm going to put some white. I'm going to change my brush size. I'm going to put some white around, especially near the edges. Because, uh, especially places where I tore it a little bit because I want it to look like it's paper and somebody tried to like rip it off. Um, but, you know, kind of like if, um, like you try to rip off a sticker and you, you get the image of the sticker but you don't really get the, the actual sticker itself, the paper of the sticker. So that's what this is. And there we go. So that looks a little bit better. Uh, let me go back into my drop shadow now and lower its effect. I still like having it. Um, I think it brings out some of the transparent parts of this, but I also think that now it looks a little too much, whereas before it was helping it now, then it was, now it's like kind of bringing attention to itself. But there we go. We just weathered it. And now we can duplicate the layer and move it around maybe so I don't know I can't remember again because we we didn't really keep great tabs on which side was which so then again I, I say that like it wasn't my fault it's totally my fault um, but we will come back to this once we see it in 3D and actually let's take a look at it in 3D and see where those ended up. It's actually not bad, to be honest. Um, I think that's pretty good. I like that that um, that placement. I mean, maybe we take it and take some of these and like re-rotate them so they're better placed, uh, so they show up, you know, upright, but. Gotta wait for it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, I like that, I li and I like the placement. Um, so now, all right, so that's pretty cool, but it, it's still missing something. Um, so let's do this. Now we are going to go into, I'm gonna go in my tool palette I have the ellipse tool. It's two. It's the button two down from the text tool. If I uh, hold it down, it'll bring up. That's the shape tool. So yours might be the rectangle or the rounded rectangle or the line. Um, but at the bottom is custom shape tool. So I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to find a custom shape uh, because again, I'm trying to do something very video gamey. Uh, I'm going to go down to the the nuclear, um, the nuclear symbol, which I already have up. And in this case, I'm going to make this green. So before when we were working in normals, we were working in blacks and whites and then letting Endu convert for us. Here, um, we have, because we're painting color, we can use all the color we want. Um, please ignore the windows 
uh, update tab there. Um, all right, so now I'm going to shift and drag, and that'll create a new shape layer. And position it kind of, you know, rotate, scale it. And I'm going to try to keep it off of, I don't want it to be centered. I don't want it to be perfect, but I create this shape. Um, and scale and rotate is control and T, by the way. Uh, you know, I know if you're new at Photoshop, you're probably like, this is the worst video you've made yet. And I apologize for that. Um, but yeah, so scale and rotate, that's called free transform. That's control T. So we just added the shape um, and then we made it green, uh, you know, scaled and rotated into position. Uh, and then now we want to right click on. So this will create the shape as a new layer. We want to right click that layer and click rasterize layer because what that did is it made it like a vector, um, which means it was just like drawn with, it's not a vector, it, it goes into the whole like, you know, functions of Photoshop, functions of other programs, we're not interested in that right now, but it treats it as a, a shape object rather than as a, um, rather than as a, you know, set of drawn pixels that you can manipulate. So that's what rasterizing is. It, it makes it a set of manipulatable uh, pixels. So before we do anything with this, let's um, copy this layer a few times once it's rasterized. And Place it around, okay, uh, and then let's actually shift click the three of these, right click, merge, um, because we're going to do the same thing to all of them and it's easier to work on, it's faster to work just on one layer. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the top of the layer window where it says normal, it's a drop down, and this is the blend mode. So, come on, there you go. Actually, let me save because we already saw a crash. Gonna go to the blend mode. Gonna go to multiply. How does multiply look? Looks okay. Aha! So multiply is going to give us a transparent sort of look. Almost like plastic wrap or a, like a plastic film put over this. And we're gonna lower the opacity a little bit. Um, I may even, uh, we don't need to do that. That's more advanced. I don't want to go that deep into Photoshop. Um, so I, I'm, I multiplied it. I lowered its opacity and that makes it look like it's painted on. Then we're going to take our marquee tool because we don't want these stamps to go. We want them to be on the wood, not on the metal. So I'm going to use the marquee tool to select the parts of each of these uh, nuclear stamps that are on the metal and I'm going to hit delete or backspace to get rid of them Okay, and just like before, uh, let's take our eraser tool and uh, let's lower, oops, 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 okay. Let's lower the flow and opacity of this a little bit and make this paint not look like it's super pristine. We want it to look kind of weathered like it's been there for a while and it's been scratched off a little bit. OK, 
Okay, cool. Uh, so if we zoom out a little bit, so again, save, and then we're going to open up 3do. So while it's loading, if you notice in your ddo window, you see that the all the layers you just added, uh, they're the same layers as the ones in Photoshop. There we go. That's pretty cool. I like having the nuclear view with the goats on board, so I actually might copy one of these guys and so in my shape layer I'm going to marquee copy paste and let's put that over here I like having that with the goats on board now you notice it's in a new layer it's not uh, multiplied anymore so we're gonna do that and then we're gonna lower opacity so it gets the look we want save that's pretty cool okay cool so there we go there's our crate All right, so now that we have all this done, uh, let's see. Okay, I'm going to save all maps. And then, let's see. Um, All right, so that does it for for uh, the Photoshop portion of this tutorial. Um, in the next video, we will get this guy into Unity. And uh, oh, actually, you know, let's just do it right now. Uh, let's open the exporter. Uh, so exporter is the right or leftmost on this window here. Uh, so you see, it says open the exporter. So, now we are going to uh, we're going to set the path and we are going to create textures, exports, and we're going to make a new folder inside of exports called tutorial export and we're going to hit OK and then we, we want that to be cube so that's the name of each uh, let's yeah that's fine uh, let's call it crate underscore map means it's going to be underscore like whatever map it is so it would be crate underscore albedo for the color crate underscore gloss crate underscore normal and then dot targa this is the file type I would recommend either a targa or a PNG most cases you never want to do a JPEG and you typically don't want to do a PSD because PSDs are going to contain a lot of data because they'll have all the uh, layer information so Targa is, is pretty great. Um, these are fine. Export Target Unity 5, which is uh, what we wanted it to be. And so then we click Export All Materials. Export Finished. All right. So out. Click 
off that. Um, and then we can actually exit. Do you want to save project? Sure, why not? Okay. All right, so that's that. Uh, and then let's open Unity. And bring in our crate. So if you haven't already, uh, let's open Blender up real quick. Things taking a little bit of time. Whoops. Uh, file open. I was looking at an old document. Um, 